Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So the meaning of the word Passover, actually in Hebrew, uh, it is a Pesach. And that means to literally pass over, skip over. And the reason it's called this is because um, Moses uh, executed uh, God's commands of the ten, the ten plagues. And the last plague was the smiting of the firstborn. And God Adonai gave a command come to Moses to tell all the all the house of Israel, all, all of the house of Israel, to uh, take the blood of a lamb, an unblemished lamb, um, and to sacrifice it, and take this blood and uh, to smear the spread it on the doorposts of every household in Egypt. Um, it went like this just like this, like a covering. And then anyone who would have the blood, any house that had the, this blood over its doorpost would be passed over by the destroyer that was sent by God. Um, and this Passover, this putting the blood, this s s smearing the blood over the doorposts of these houses was very um, foreshadowing of another time where we take the Passover lamb of God, who is Messiah Yeshua, Jesus, and uh, it, his blood covers the doorposts of our heart. So we're passed over again by the judgment of God that happens in the, at the end of days. Um, so this uh, celebration of Passover, Pesach, is not, not a small thing. It is uh, probably the most important, uh, the, the Hebrew word is pronounced mu'ed, uh, appointed time. One of the most important appointed times that God has ordained uh, for the Jews, and not just for the Jews, but also, I believe, thoroughly uh, to the Gentiles as well. As a matter of fact, in 1 Corinthians, Paul talks about celebrating the Passover Seder, um, and, but doing this with removing the leaven from our hearts um, and not just from our houses. That's another thing about Passover is uh, during the feast of Passover, it's about eight days long, and during this time there should be no leaven in your house. And there's a commandment uh, that was done in the Haggadah, this little this uh, little uh, tale that we tell about the exodus of Egypt, of the, the, the exodus from Egypt into Sinai and to the promised land, um, which echoes the redemption and deliverance that Yeshua offers uh, to those who believe. All right, so 1 Corinthians 5, 6, your boasting is not good. Don't you know the saying, it, it takes only a little chametz, leaven, to leaven a whole batch of dough, Get rid of the old chametz so that you can be a new batch of dough because in reality you are unleavened. In reality, you are unleavened. For our Pesach lamb, Passover lamb, the Messiah, has been sacrificed. So let us celebrate the seder, not with leftover chametz, the chametz of wickedness and evil, but with the matzah of purity and truth. Unleavened bread. This is unleavened bread. There's a, this is a very big deal. Matzah is a very, very big deal in the Passover Seder, and it is um, pretty much uh, uh, a staple and a symbol of Messiah Yeshua. And uh, for, for me to get into that deeper, you would actually have to be at the Seder itself. I recommend you wholeheartedly to, to come to the Seder on April 15th. 
um, and uh, learn in greater detail about the, this is the Last Supper. This is the Last Supper that Messiah Yeshua attended uh, right before his crucifixion, death, and then later, which later leads to the resurrection. Wish Passover for me was always my, probably my favorite holiday. Passover and Hanukkah were my favorite holidays. Um, and but Passover was just like it was. It's an epic event because you always you know get you get dressed with your best clothes and it's a family affair and everybody comes and we tell the story of how we were once slaves in Egypt and how God with an out, a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Rem, um, takes the Jews, the Israelites, out of Egypt, uh, out of slavery, into Sinai, gives them the Torah, and then brings them later into the promised land of Canaan. And uh, I've always loved to hear this story growing up. Um, and it was, again, like I say, one of my favorite Mo'adim, appointed times, um, holiday, if you will. But um, after I became a believer in Messiah Yeshua, when I you know, discovered the truth, um, it, uh, it became so much more for me um, because he's heavily hidden in this Haggadah. All throughout, all throughout this recital, this liturgy, uh, this is a messianic liturg liturgy, messianic Haggadah, the ones that I read when I was growing up, of course, were not messianic. There was no mention of Yeshua and Jesus in the ones that I uh, read when I was growing up. But, but this one is messianic. So this one actually is uh, very um, indicative and it points out Messiah Yeshua throughout the whole entire Passover Seder. Um, things that were uh, hiding in plain sight for me, if you will. Um, uh, which is kind of, sort of, in general, how, how that, that works. Messiah Yeshua is hiding in plain sight for, for many, many people, Jew and non-Jew. But I guess for the Jew, um, even more so, because um, when, when, a, when a Gentile person, a non-Jewish person, learns about Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ, um, it's amazing, but when a Jewish person comes to the knowledge of who Yeshua really is, it is mind-blowingly life-changing. It's life-changing for the Gentile, but it's so much more life-changing for the Jew because everything, we don't, we don't recognize Yeshua, Jesus, because he's been... Uh, gentilified. I, I hate to say this, but it's the truth. Yeshua has been uh, made into a Gentile. And it's very hard for a Jewish person to recognize any Jewishness of Messiah Yeshua when he's made into a Gentile. So after that barrier is, is gone and removed, uh, and, and a Jewish person realizes, oh, wait a minute, this Yeshua guy, he had a Hebrew name. Yeshua means salvation from God in Hebrew. Um, he, his disciples were Jewish. Everything that he talks about is Jewish. He talks about the Torah all the time. The Torah talks about him all the time. So all of these things... Are, in, are, are, are pointing to the, to the screaming fact that this Yeshua Jesus guy is a Jew and that the new covenant was for Jews. Uh, it, was done, it, was, it, was, it was done for the Jewish people first and it trickled over and made a way for non-Jews to, ha to have a an intimate relationship with God.